one. It's not how it works. All right, uh, ladies and germs, it's time for Good Mythical More, where we give you more. Okay, I'm gonna give you something. I went camping again this weekend. Did, did, I think between between the two of us, there's been like five camping trips in the past six weeks. I've really caught the bug, man. I was jealous that you were going. I don't think it's a disease. And we share, you know, we share this uh, FJ Cruiser to kind of take on things. Yeah, well, and you, then but, you've got to. But you, but you've been three times, and now I've only I've been two times. So, I mean, yeah, I haven't even out the score yet. Right, but the third, but I, but this is okay, okay, okay. I was, I was just saying, hey, I was, we we need to divide it up. I was, you know, I wish I was camping. Um, I went three weeks in a row. It could have been four weekends in a row. So I got, you know, I got this book, uh, the book that's got the different trails in it, right? Uh, the one that I left at home. Discovering the real you. Nope. It's a book about, with some trails in it. And uh, I found this trail that goes up into the Los Padres National Forest. That Baseball means, team. That means the fathers. Really? And so the Padres is daddies? It's like a whole baseball team? The daddies, daddies, yeah. Big daddies! That's, I think that's pretty intimidating. The San Diego daddies. Isn't the San Diego Padres? Is that... Yeah, I, I know Absolutely. so little. Okay, so anyway, we went up to the in Daddy's general. National Forest, and uh, we were going to find a campsite. And there was actually this little campsite on the in the book. They were like, "This is they're secluded camping up there. This is a campsite that's all by itself, and it's got this beautiful view." Taking your wife and kids for the first time camping. Yeah, and you were thinking, "I hope it doesn't go half as bad as it did with Link with that tent thing at the Joshua Tree." I was I was pretty sure that was that kind of thing was going to happen because I looked at the weather report before I left. <laughs> And I bought a tent. I bought a tent that you were using too. Uh, yeah, I did use the tent. That was a result of the other tent being vacation lodge being, being demolished. Demolished. So um, we go up there. You know, I, I stopped at the the Seven Eleven on the way up. It's the only place I could find wood. Yeah, I found three bundles of wood to take up there into the mountains and, plenty. and, and have a, a campfire. Plenty. And we get up there, and as we're entering into the Los Padres National Forest, I see. A sign that says, fire restrictions, absolutely no. And it had like a bunch of things, including campfires with a big Ghostbuster symbol on it, you know. That's what I call the thing with the X. And I'm like, well, this is unfortunate because we're gonna have a campfire. I got three bundles of wood. But then I'm like, you know, like, I don't wanna be the guy that starts the forest fire. I don't wanna break the law. This is a serious no, deal. You can, go uh, to, yeah. you can go to jail for murder for starting a forest fighter that kills somebody. This is, you don't play around yeah, with this. Yeah, I mean, in the news down there in uh, Carlsbad, this horrible thing's happening. So, uh, don't take this stuff lightly. Yeah, so so we, we I'm like, well, maybe as we go up in altitude, we'll get to a sign that says, okay, fires are okay up here, you've gotten far enough. Or Smokey the Bear himself, we're like, you're, you're good to go, lad. Well, and you know what? The, and he's a pirate. The exit I got off was called Smokey Bear Road. Really? Right there next to Hungry Valley, yeah. So that, I, he I, lives up there. I get off at the exit where the where the guy who says, don't start fires. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's yeah, on don't. the brain. Yeah, don't start a fire near Smokey the Bear's exit. So we get out there. Uh, lurking. Far up into, it's a couple of hours into the wilderness, as wow. Shepard calls it. We're in the wilderness, Dad. And uh, I'm going to leave you here if you don't shut up. And I see another what sign. I see another sign that says no campfires. Mm. And so then we get to this beautiful campsite that is referenced in this book. And then I, I realize I have service. So at that point, I'm like, well, maybe they mean no campfires except in like fire rings that are there, you know? Or maybe they mean no campfires. I'm gonna call the number. You call the National Forest number. The first thing they say is, only you can prevent forest fires. I mean, that's the first thing the guy says. Yeah. If calling to re report a fire, hang up and dial 911. 911. And then I noticed that this area has been burned before by a wildfire. There's, you know, you can see the marks on the trees and the black marks and stuff. So I'm like, I just don't feel right about this. This is a beautiful campsite. Jesse and I discuss it, and I'm like, I don't want to take a chance, even though I feel totally like I could keep this, it'd be, it'd be totally responsible. Let's go up to the established campground two miles up the road, and, and, and let's, let's see if we can do it there. And luckily, when we got to that point, we go in there and it says, campfires okay at designated campsites. 
Oh. So there's a campsite there with firing. We had we had a wonderful time. Well, it's highly it's, recommend it. It's interesting how the campfire becomes such the focal point of the camping experience. I mean, it's like a television in any any well-meaning family's home. It's the thing you sit and look at. Yeah. Brainless. But it doesn't give you a while. Lot. It doesn't give you a lot like TV. Well, but it it does give you something and when it's not there Oh, it's everything great. tends to fall apart. The boys had an incredible time. Jesse had it. I mean, people will sell campfire simulators that you can take. Those are not good. Out camping. I've heard camping. Those fire in a box or something like that. But here's the, here, here's the where, where it comes all back to this whole uh, bear story and, and, and thinking about. This is a bear story? Turkey having to get up and, oh. and poop and pee. Uh, we're out there and we're in the wilderness and there is uh, way down at the beginning of the campground, I mean, a good. 200 yard walk, there is uh, one of those freestanding toilets that's just a kind of a hole. Well, an outhouse. It's an outhouse, essentially. Yeah. Uh, I will say I used it, my wife used it. Uh, to, it was uneventful, everything was fine. But then I was like, I've been building Did up. you feel the breeze? Oh yeah, you feel the breeze. When you sit down, there's a breeze that comes up from the toilet. It's unpleasant to think about the fact that what's being pushed up there. But I've been building it up uh, with the boys that, you know, you guys, if you have to use the bathroom, you're gonna have to do it in the woods. And I'm not just talking about marking your territory. I'm talking about if you've gotta go, you gotta go. I've got a shovel, you know, <laughs> biodegradable toilet paper, whatever, we can make this happen. So. Um, Cause you didn't know there was gonna be an outhouse, so you were pre preparing them. But because I had prepared them emotionally, once it came around for them, th they wanted to go. They didn't wanna go to the outhouse. They wanted to. They wanted to do the thing that we had been building up. They wanted to do the tree grab and lean. And so I was like, "Okay, boys." Tree grab and so lean. So I the tree grab and lean. Yeah. You know, you grab the tree and you lean back with your with your legs and like, and you dig a hole in the ground. Yeah. So we dug a hole in the ground, and uh, then I kind of turned a little bit. Uh, Look away, Dad. Shiver went first. Lock went second. T two different Same holes. Hole? Two oh. different. Two different holes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I saw. There's something changed. Something changed about my boys this weekend. You know, they became a little bit more of a man. They collectively they pooped outside and buried it. And uh, the problem is now I can't get them to stop. They just been doing it. They've been in the backyard at the house. <laughs> <laughs> you got to bury that stuff deep, or you're gonna get some wild animals coming up on you. Really? I don't, I don't think animals are into that, man. I went. I mean, I went as deep as I could go before I hit bedrock. <laughs> really? I mean, it was very rocky soil. I hit rocks and then. I, I, I gave up on it. I think I have to sneeze, so. Okay. Then you see. I mean, that could be an appropriate way to end this thing. We could just end on a sneeze, if it ever comes. I actually just fell asleep there for a second. <laughs> okay. Good story, though.